Welcome to Chapter 9. In this chapter, we're going to get information about our user and our user's browser and manipulate that information. Sometimes it can be useful to find out information about the user, their window, the browser that they're using, etc. And JavaScript's got a rich set of objects that help us do that. So the first object we'll work with is called the Navigator object. And that's where we can get the name of the browser, the version, and some other interesting information. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do here documents dot write. And we're going to get first the code name of the browser. So, and this is simply going to be from the navigator object, navigator dot app code name. So we're not actually instantiating a navigator class. It's built in. So we just do navigator. So we don't have to like something is equals new navigator. It's just navigator dot and then app code name. All right. Now let's go ahead and we'll insert a break. And let's get the application name of the browser. So name of browser. We'll see if those two are different navigator dot app name and finally let's get the version of the browser there we go navigator dot app version and there's some other information we can get, too, like whether or not cookies are enabled or some other things that we may or may not want to use. All right, so let's go ahead and let's actually run this in a few browsers and see what we get. So first, I'm going to run this in Firefox. So in Firefox, we get this. The code name of the browser is Mozilla. The name of the browser is Netscape. Remember Netscape from way back when? And the version of the browser is 5.0, Macintosh, English, U.S., all right, so let's try it in Chrome. And if you have a PC, you should try this in Internet Explorer as well. All right, this also says that the code name of the browser is Mozilla. The name is Netscape. Version of the browser is 5.0. And it says we're a Macintosh, Intel, Mac, OS X. And it's a WebKit browser. Chrome. So there's a lot of information here on Chrome. So this is a little bit different than what we get back from Firefox. Here's Firefox. And here's Chrome. Let's try Safari. So with Safari, Code name of the browser is Mozilla, name of the browser is Netscape, version 5.0, Mac, and this one is Apple WebKit. So, so some dis different information there in the version, which can be useful to us. Let's just out of curiosity see what the Komodo internal browser comes up with. So this is just a plain old Mozilla Netscape version 5.0. So, for example, we could create a switch and see what we got back and then uh, write specific code geared towards the specific browsers. Because as you may be aware, everything we've done here is pretty universal for the different browsers. But let's say, for example, we had some CSS code that worked differently in different browsers. We could detect the browser and then write a switch and just apply the specific CSS that's targeted towards that browser. So there's a lot of different things we can do with the navigator object. Now that we've looked at the navigator object, let's look at the window object. The window object is supposed to represent the open window within the browser. So let's just do a couple of those properties. Notice these are properties and not methods. There's no parentheses after them. So let's, for example, get the document object for the window. So document write br another break document. So we'll get this by saying window dot document. Now you may be surprised at what this returns. 
And you see this in brackets here, object HTML document. This is actually saying that this is an object reference referring to the window. And I actually could go in here and go further beyond the document and get a specific element. So this is an object. If you see a brackets here, you know that's a specific object, not a value. So this is returning the whole window, the document object, which we can then use. All right. Let's do one that actually returns a value. Let's do the dimensions of the window. So width, and we get the width value, width, window, dot, and what we're looking for is inner width. And we might as well get the height while we're at it. Just like that. So the width of this particular window is 362, and the height is 643. Now, if we did this in Firefox, we're going to get different values for the height and width, because this is a different size window. So that window is 875 by 574. Now, we also can use these to set the width and height of the browser. So let me close this guy up, and let me set here window dot inner width, I don't know why I'm doing width first, equals 200, window dot inner height equals 200. All right, let's try this in Firefox. And I don't know if you're able to see it, but the window changed. Now, it's not achieving a width of of 200 because it's just plain not wide enough to accommodate the content and buttons that we have. But notice the height switched to 200. Let's try it in a different browser. Let's try it in um, Chrome. So notice Chrome didn't adjust at all, but the values here say 200 or 200. Interesting. So we've got a difference between our browsers and how they behave when inner width and inner height is assigned. And as you get more advanced in JavaScript, you have to start being careful because different browsers actually behave a little bit different. Here's another one. It didn't change, but actually the width and height values say 200. Isn't that interesting? So you've got to be somewhat careful when working with this window object because different browsers are going to implement it differently. Let's just do one more. Let's do uh, let's do location, the location object. All right, so document right br location plus window dot location. Let's see what we get now. All right, so that actually adjusted our width and height. That's interesting in Komodo. And there is our location. And this is actually the path to this particular file. Uh, do it one more time in a different browser. Let's do uh, Safari. And there we have the location. Now notice that in Safari, it preserves the spaces. In Komodo, in this example, it puts a percent %20, which is the escape code for the spaces. So uh, interesting diversity of behaviors there. Now, we also can if we want to set the location. So let's say after we did all this, I said window dot location equals http colon slash slash www dot cnn dot com. All right, we're going to save and let's try this in another browser. There's Chrome. And notice we went to www dot cnn dot com. 
So the location object can be not only used to um, get the set get the location, but also set the location. And the location object itself has additional properties. Let me go ahead and comment this out because I don't want the window location to switch. But for example, I could say document right break location and let's do the protocol. And this will just return the protocol protocol of the location. Well, we spelled everything wrong there. And we're simply going to say here, window dot location. And we'll go one step further, protocol. All right, let's give this a try. Try it in, uh, let's try it in Safari. So the protocol is file colon, because we're local. If we were actually somewhere on the web, we'd probably see HTTP or HTTPS colon. So that's the location object. So we've looked at the window object. We've looked at the location object. Let's look real quickly at the screen object, which gives information about the screen, which is the actual monitor. So let's do the here screen object. And let's just do document write break. And let's do screen height, which you won't be terribly surprised to learn, is going to be screen dot height. We also can get the color depth, document right VR green color depth plus screen dot 